are shortcuts through space and time that link two areas. They could be close or distant. It doesn't really matter. They're still wormholes. So another way to think of it is think of a mountain range. You're crossing that mountain range. It would take you like weeks or maybe even months to cross that mountain range. On the other hand, there's a tunnel. It would take you just a few days to cross that tunnel because you cover less land than with the mountain that went than crossing all the mountains. So it's kind of the same thing with wormholes. So wormholes were first proposed in 1916 by mathematician Ludwig Flam, who was using Einstein's theory of general relativity that describes how gravity can bend space-time. So uh, most of you seen the movie Interstellar, right? Yeah. So this other guy named Kip Thorne, who, he was a physicist, and he, his idea was used through the movie Interstellar. Most of you have seen, right? No. Yeah. OK. So that, I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to spoil the movie. I'm just going to say a little bit about it. So it's about a group of astronauts traveling through a wormhole to explore a group of distant exoplanets. So wormholes aren't just 2D holes, like in some cartoons. They're three-dimensional objects. We live in a 3D universe, so it's kind of like a 3D, three-sphere portal that you go into. And they also close and open. They close and open so quickly, some scientists think not even light can pass through them. So to, go th to pass through that wormhole, you need, to use a sp you need to go faster than the speed of light, which is hard to do. Scientists are still trying to figure out how and to use a special exotic substance called negative energy. So negative energy is a kind of a concept used in physics that explains some, gra some fields, including the gravitational field. So wormholes, how do wormholes form? They might be formed by, nobody really can answer this question because they're not real yet. So they could be formed by negative energy by compressing lots of negative energy into two small spaces and then you might get a wormhole or or they might be black holes and white holes so you, you got all the guys know what a black hole is right yeah. well since I'm, I'm on a video in case somebody doesn't it's basically uh, something that forms by a star a huge star dying and it has infinite gravity and sucks things in so, the, and white hole is the opposite. Nobody knows how it was formed, and I have no clue either. So they, they're the opposite. They shoot things out. It has infinite anti-gravity. So if white holes exist, black holes exist, but white holes, not so sure. If the white holes exist, they might be wormholes because the black hole is the entrance because it has infinite gravity, and the white hole is the exit because it has infinite anti-gravity. So, uh, so most of you have read science fiction novels, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the uses for a wormhole are pretty straightforward. One's really obvious, space travel. And another one, it's not so obvious, it's time travel. So, say you're going 20 light years away. Uh, you through a wormhole. You beat the light to it by about 20 years, to the destination by about 20 years. And since you beat the light, you travel to, through the future. So there's, and I have my own idea about wormholes, how about using wormholes. So in 2880, an asteroid is predicted to hit Earth. Don't worry, that's 860 years from now. No, no need to worry. So you would either use the traditional way to destroy it by either moving it with a satellite or destroying it with a nuclear weapon, or you could, uh, you could use a wormhole to tr transport the asteroid far behind Earth's gravitational field, maybe even out of a threat by moving it outside the solar system. So, in uh, so I uh, thank you for everybody for listening to my presentation. I really enjoyed sharing my ideas with you guys. And will we ever find a wormhole? Only the future can tell us.